Hi, I'm Jason Miller, one of the co-founders of ForeFlight as well as one of our software developers. We've been making some changes recently to better utilize the GPS receiver built into the iPad 3G. Today I took a quick flight to test out some of our code changes and the iPad's GPS performance in general. I thought I'd create this video to show how it worked and give some bits of info on how it compares to aviation GPS's. I fly a Cirrus SR-22 so it has a pair of Garmin 430 GPS's on board. In this flight I brought along a GPS map 296 which is also made by Garmin to act as a reference GPS. It's a WASP capable GPS I could compare against. I did the flying today and brought along my dad to act as my official tester. We decided to fly up to 11,500 feet to test out the iPad at high altitudes or low air pressures since Apple states a max operating altitude of 10,000 feet for the iPad. The code we tested for this flight is beta code. It may never make it to a released version of ForeFlight Mobile, but I felt it was still useful to see. This beta code includes some straightforward moving map data readouts. These are ground speed, track, GPS altitude, as well as GPS horizontal accuracy. We compared these values to that on the portable 296 throughout the flight. So, what did we find? Well, I'll start off with the punchline. The iPad GPS is quite capable and worked well for the entire flight. We used it for about an hour straight and never saw any problem with GPS lock or an accuracy that was any worse than 50 meters or so. It did lag behind the 296 in its altitude readout, so during the climb it would show a value about 100 feet lower than the 296, and on the descent it would show about 100 feet higher. However, once our altitude stabilized in cruise it did well and typically matched the 296's altitude readout within 10 feet or so. Uh, this was when leveling at 3,000 feet for a bit to get out from under the Charlotte class Bravo, as well as when we leveled out at 11,005. The ground speed and track values match the 296 nearly exactly for the entire flight. In this case, the iPad is showing a true track versus the magnetic track on the 296, but once factoring in the magnetic variation of 7 degrees, the iPad and the 296 were typically reading within a degree of each other, and the speeds were rarely different by more than a knot. In cruise flight, we did appear to see maybe a two to four second lag of the blue marker that uh, ForeFlight uses to show your position on the iPad map. It wasn't much, but we did think it was just a touch behind the panel mounted GPS's as well as the 296 portal. Positioning of the iPad didn't seem to matter much at all. For most of the flight, the iPad was in my dad's lap and the GPS signal was just fine. Holding it up under the windscreen didn't really make a noticeable difference. Of course, this is a low wing composite airplane, so if you're in a high wing metal plane, it might be more sensitive to placement in the cockpit. One thing I found interesting was that the iPad screen was much easier to view than the GPS Map 296, even with my fingerprints all over it. For one, the iPad screen can be set to a brighter setting, and secondly, you can easily adjust the screen angle of the iPad as needed to reduce glare, since we didn't have it in a mount. Um, these combined to make the iPad really quite readable in the cockpit on this uh, partly cloudy day. Once we reached 11,500, we stayed at that altitude for about 10 minutes. I've heard from some that the 10,000 foot limit, Apple states, is partly a default limit for these types of electronics. The iPad has no moving parts, so a failing hard drive is not really a concern. Uh, one potential concern I've heard is that thermal issues could occur in the thin air, uh, since it's harder for the iPad to dissipate heat. I can't really comment on that, but to say that during our time above 10,000 feet we saw no issues at all. In fact, during most of the time the iPad was sitting in direct sun. Again, your mileage may vary and a longer flight's certainly needed to come to any you know, reasonable uh, answer to that question, but it's still a nice uh, thing to see no issues on this flight. In conclusion, I was quite happy with the iPad's GPS performance. It's not an aviation grade GPS and as such it's not for primary navigation, but it's a great way to improve situational awareness, even in a technically advanced aircraft like the Cirrus. On this flight, in fact, I was able to see us entering and exiting a nearby MOA, something that wouldn't have been obvious to me without a sectional chart sitting in my lap. It also makes for a great backup, as I found out on a recent flight when my onboard GPS antenna were acting up. The iPad was quite handy to help me stay out of the nearby class Charlies while I was on my BFR flight. Well, I hope this video has offered some helpful info. We'd really love to hear your experience with 4Flight on the iPad or the iPhone. 
As always, please email us at team at fourflight.com or find us on uh, Twitter and Facebook. Thanks.